everyone, my name is Bri and I am the new nurse and manager of health services for camp and recreation at the league in Camp Greentop. Um, I wanted to take this opportunity to go ahead and make a video for everyone on how to fill out our medical forms for the health center for Camp Greentop. Um, I'm just coming on uh, staff back in November, I've noticed there are are a lot of things missing um, and it's really hard sometimes to uh, get the information across when we're just working through the phone um, or online and in email format so I hope that this video will help relay the information um, that I've been distributing uh, with the changes that we're making uh, with the program just to kind of streamline our processes um, and make things very, very clear and very, very safe for our campers. Um, so I will be going over our medical form, um, which is typically or traditionally has been our green form. I do not have color coded papers today, um, but our medical form, which is generally the green form that many of you are aware of and know. Um, then we have our medication form, which is has been traditionally our pink form. And then I'm also gonna go over several sample medication forms that are correct and incorrect, um, as well as our MAR. So this is a new term for many of you. This is called our medication administration record and is what myself and other health uh, center staff use to actually administer meds to our campers every session. If you have any questions outside this video that I, I didn't cover, I am more than happy to help answer and help you uh, in any way that I can. What you'll need to do to ensure that your camper isn't turned away from, from a session at the last minute. Um, and generally we like to have these forms in two weeks before the, set, the registered session date. Um, and for me personally, it takes me several days um, minimum to prepare for each session um, and depending on the type of session. Um, so that two weeks is the date that we're going to aim for to get our paperwork in and correct. Um, but absolutely uh, all the corrections um, and information that is incomplete on forms must be submitted no later than 72 hours before our sessions begin. This gives me an adequate amount of time um, kind of cutting it close, but it does give me an, an adequate amount of time to get done what I need to get done for a session um, so that it's a safe check-in process for our campers um, and a smooth process uh, for our campers and families and staff. So you're going to be getting regular emails from me moving forward, uh, especially as we approach our sessions. The information that I'll be reaching out to you for is either um, just letting you know where you stand on your paperwork, uh, what's expired, what's still in date, what missing information do I have, are you good to go? Um, and also with those emails, uh, and we'll get to this later in the video, why this is so important, um, but you'll also be confirming your medication administration record for your camper for each session. So this is gonna be repetitive and redundant for many, um, but, coming from my history and experience in the medical field, repetition and redundancy equals safety. So that is our main goal um, with our health center and the way we wanna function in camp. So I very highly recommend um, as you get through your paperwork and when you get to the time that if it's correct and submitted, I highly, highly, highly encourage you to keep copies uh, for yourself on record, things that you can refer to and also just keep blank forms with you when you go to um, doctors update to get those updates um, readily so i really highly recommend that um, just getting in the habit of bringing these forms with you every time you go to a doctor's appointment so that if changes are made they can be made right then you don't have to follow up um, because any updates or changes i have to have a doctor's signature and that authorizes me uh, the permission to actually administer the change whatever that may be and i'll get to that here a little a little later down in the video. So what you'll see now is our medical form. This is uh, the form that has all your campers past medical history, allergies, seizures, um, health insurance information, and demographics. So this form is very important. Um, tells me what I can expect 
and our health staff um, and our other staff too what to expect um, when your camper arrives with us at any given session so important very important information on here of course uh, the name of your camper date of birth all the all the things up here like the demographics um, who is the legal guardian phone numbers accurate phone numbers that we can actually uh, get a hold of someone and uh, and we also check at check-in uh, your emergency contact information as well so there are a couple of double checks there um, health insurance information put what is appropriate there allergies so this is medication allergies food allergies and perhaps any environmental allergies as well any any allergy information here and then please also put the reaction so if it's a severe allergy please let us know whether it's severe or not and then seizures um does your camper have a history of seizures are they prone to seizures um any information about that what kind of triggers they are when would you like to be called are they that common um, that you only want us calling after they've you know gone for some period of time um, what is your plan of care there for your family your camper um, next page is our health history so any pertinent health history there um, so any assistive devices so do they wear glasses hearing aids um, braces uh, anything that they could possibly be bringing with them that they need to use as for assistance um, do they have a bowel program um, that's important alcohol consumption uh, for those participants who are 21 years of older this is typically um, typically referencing to like our travel camp um, tend to have alcoholic beverages or can have alcoholic beverages on travel trips um, so we need to know even if they are over 21 are they allowed to do so and then how much um, what do I need to, you know, what kind of medical conditions that I need to notify a guardian or a physician um, if something arises? And are there any serious injuries, health, me mental health concerns? And do we have any specialized healthcare procedures? So does your camper have a G-tube? Um, do, are they uh, diabetic and have an insulin regimen? Um, blood sugar checks? Uh, do they have something specific with their bowel program? Um, those kind of things. So anything that I will need to know, um, that's specialized, it's kind of outside the norm. Let me know in as much detail what I need to do here. And then immunizations. This is a, a box that I have a lot of questions about. So TB skin tests are required up to the age of 18 and then after the age of 18 they are not required but highly recommended um, at least every two to three years i believe um so giving us some sort of the background information the dates that kind of thing just fill it out to the best of your ability um and then if there's anything missing or are there's so this one right here are there any immunization exemptions due to religious medical or other reasons yes or no so this little sentence here is something that maybe many of you, um, many families and campers may need to address. Um, if your camper does not take injections well, or uh, they're, they, they can't tolerate injections or any kind of special treatments like that, especially injections and vaccines, if there's some particular reason why they can't um, receive that then you'll mark here that there's there's a reason why um, because they either need sedation um, if they're going to do that or not and and sometimes where we are in the year doesn't really jive with where we're going to camp um, so you can always wave out of it but you understand um, that that is going to be at your risk um, if they're they go to camp and they don't have the vaccines that are recommended so there is that option um, and i know Many families, you know, they, they need to need to use that because we're stuck in si sticky situations sometimes. Um, and the last page, this is one of the more important pages. Um, and this one is left out actually uh, quite quite often, more often than you would think. Um, so this is the the doctor. The doctor's signature is here. It's important to have a signature. Um, I this verifies the information that is provided 
um, on the medical form, the date of physical exam, this is the date that this form expires. So one year from this date, this form expires. Not the date that it's signed here or the parent guardian signature, but it is the physical exam date that expires one year um, after, after there. So if there's any dietary restrictions, that's also important. I pass that along to our kitchen staff. Um, so physician signature, title, address and phone number in the event we have to contact them for any reason. Um, and then also this signature is also very, very important. Uh, signature of partic participant or legal guardian. This gives me permission to actually provide treatment uh, during our session from the family. So this provides me authorization to offer treatment. Physician signature verifies the information that's been given. So I know what I'm working with. Um, and that's pretty much all that is most important for, uh, in terms of the medical form, our green form. Uh, so very quick, very simple, not many trip ups on this form. However, our medication form is another story. So I'm going to start with a little incorrect version of our medication form and go through and exactly why and this form is going to be included in any emails so that you can reference it and refer to either in this video or you can also have the opportunity to view it on screen and print it out for yourself for review um, so this is the incorrect sample for, to start um, so you will you will at the top of the top of the form participants name I put camper sample <laughs> and then their date of birth, their disability, any allergies. Um, so this form also has to be signed by a physician. So here I might have the signature, but I don't have the date, which is very important because this form expires one year from this date that the physician signs. And then the printed name and phone number, again, in the event that I need to contact them. And sometimes the physician's signature, I have no idea what their name is. So printed name, date, phone number. Um, again, one year from the doctor's signature and date, this expires. So what is so incorrect about this form? So this is an incorrect and incomplete form and would need to be redone because it's missing so much information. Um, so say somebody put in the focal in one cap and that's all the information that was there so the highlighted or one cap daily um, that's all the information that was there so that's why i've highlighted so i don't know what the strength is of the focal in i just know that i'm getting focal in medication and i will show you later why this is so important um, so focal in one cap daily i don't know what strength that focal in is um, how many milligrams per capsule is that? Um, so it should read how many milligrams per capsule in this first column. And then the second column, it should say one capsule, such and such milligrams. And then daily, I'm typically going to assume that that's the morning. So I will schedule it for the morning, but I need to know a specific time. What is the time that your camper takes this medication? Is it in the a.m.? Um, PM, lunchtime, I have no idea, but I want to keep on their regular schedule as best, as much as possible. Um, now I can assume that Focalin is going to be administered by mouth. However, legally I cannot make assumptions. So please give me as much information about these administrations as you possibly can. Um, more information is always better in, when it comes to medical care, medical information. So I need to know what route this medication is going. Like I said, Focalin, because I've used it before, I understand that's going to be delivered via mouth. And then what's the reason? Again, I can assume that Focalin is for um, attention issues, that kind of thing, but there are many medications that are prescribed with off-label label use, and I need to know that about your camper. So I can make an assumption based on the medication that I know, but it might not be the correct story or the correct um, information that I need for your camper specifically. Um, and then, so going down the list, EES, I have no idea what that is. Um, so abbreviations, please try to avoid any abbreviations. Um, but I do see that it's five milliliters. So I know that it's some sort of liquid medication. So if that's the case, then I need to know what concentration um, 
of that medication is. So when it's a liquid solution or suspension, um, it'll come in milliliters. So that is a uh, fluid uh, metric of measurement. And then, but there's always going to be a strength of dosage associated with each milliliter or uh, of a liquid medication. So that's what I need to know. I need to know how many milligrams per milliliter. So I know how much five milliliters is in a dose. So from this, I have absolutely no idea. I don't even know what the medication is. And I certainly don't know um, the dosage that I'm administering. I just know it's five milliliters, but that could be completely wrong and, and, and cause a really big issue and mistake when it comes to administration. So five milliliters of one concentration of this medication, um, because there can be multiple concentrations of a single medication, and I could possibly um, give them a much larger or much smaller dose if I don't have all of that information. Um, and then two times daily. When is that? Like, when am I supposed to? Is that morning and evening? Is that two o'clock in the afternoon and then six o'clock at night? Um, I need, again, when am I supposed to give this? Is it breakfast, dinner, um, breakfast, bedtime? Those tend to be the hours and I can make those assumptions. But again, I don't want to take that risk and liability with your campers. So also, again, needing the route and reason because I have no idea what this medication is for. I don't know if this is supposed to go orally or maybe it sh it's supposed to go a G-tube or maybe it's supposed to go rectally. Um, and because I have no idea what the medication is, I have no idea what the reason is. Um, so this just leaves me a lot of questions and not a great ability to provide care for your camper. Like I said, Miralax, I know what Miralax is. I know that it comes in a powder form. I know it also comes in little packet forms, but also powder. Um, so one, give one of what? One capful, one packet, um, one half capful, and daily. Is that in the morning or bedtime, et cetera? And melatonin. Melatonin obviously is a sleep aid, um, but this also comes in many different forms, many different strengths, anywhere from one milligram, you know, upward to 10, 15, 20 milligrams, even 30 milligrams. So, uh, so I have melatonin three milligrams at bedtime. Okay. I know I'm supposed to be giving a one, a three milligram dose at bedtime, but is this a three milligram tablet or gummy, or is this a one milligram tablet or gummy? That's going to differ in how many tablet or gummies that I give. I could give one or up to three at bedtime. So that information, that missing information can lead to many mistakes and errors. Um, some medications to some of you don't, don't, aren't very important, but they are to me. I will take, um, vitamins, over the counter medications and all that, all those things very seriously because I've seen them affect people very seriously. Um, so Yes, and then also none of these were indicated whether or not they were emergency medication or not. I can look at these and say, okay, generally these aren't gonna be emergency medications, but I still I have no idea what EES is. So I don't know if that's an emergency medication or not. That could be something for someone's seizures um, and it would be an emergency medication, but I have no idea. So this form is incomplete and leaves a lot to be desired on my end. So now I'm gonna go on to a correct form. And this is what a form should look like. And so I went, I did two pages here. So I tried to get each type of medication that I see um, commonly on here so that you would have some reference. Um, and again, this is going to be in any emails. Um, along with this video and the document of instructions that I have. So you should be um, amply prepared to be able to fill out any and all of these forms. And like I said, any additional questions you have, of course, reach out to me and I'd be happy, happy, happy to help you. Um, so this is the correct sample form. So name, date of birth, 
disability, allergy. Um, and if you have multiple forms, it'd be great if you can mark, you know, one of two, one of three, one of four, whatever it may be. Um, that's generally helpful so I know how many pages that I'm looking for because sometimes papers um, come over to me in wonky order um, and I don't want to miss any pages uh, of orders that I have from you all. So going back through, so this is uh, kind of following the corrections from the incorrect page. So Focalin, so I now know, okay, Focalin, one capsule daily. So that's not wrong, but it's just incomplete. So this one is more complete. So Focalin XR, so now I know it's extended release, 30 milligram capsule. So now I know that every capsule that I'm to receive of this medication is 30 milligrams. And it is a one capsule dose, so a 30 milligram dose in the morning, so I'm gonna be giving that at breakfast, is an oral route, so he's gonna be taking that, or this per, this camper is going to be taking that orally, and it's for ADHD, as I assumed, but now I have the actual information, so I know um, that it's correct, and I'm not having to make any assumptions. Is it emergency medication? No, um, but it is to be, so these are special instructions, so it is to be given um, shortly after they wake up, and before breakfast, and sprinkle it on top of a spoon full of applesauce. So that's, um, so anytime I have capsules, that's a great little info tidbit to help me when it comes to administration that this camper likes their Focalin to be sprinkled on applesauce and they probably won't take the capsule if I try to offer them the capsule, um, which can lead to me having to waste medication sometimes because <laughs> I don't have that extra information and I go to administer it and now they, the camper may have spit it out um, or, or, or somehow that it, the medication just wasn't administered because I didn't present it in the way that they are comfortable with and used to. Um, so as much information as possible is always super, super helpful. And especially like this when it comes to capsules and oh, I have to sprinkle that on there. So that, that's great. Um, EES is erythromycin ethyl succinate. So in, in a, so this particular concentration would be 200 milligrams in a five milliliter solution or 200 milligrams per five mLs. Um, so that calculates to be, can't do the math in my head, but that's okay because we use a calculator to verify and confirm. And so 200 milligrams um, in five milliliters turned out to be 40 milligrams per milliliter. So the dose is a five milliliter dose, which equals to be a 200 milligram dose. And this is to be administered in the morning at breakfast, 2 p.m. and at dinner time, p.m. Um, and then bedtime would be at bedtime. And I have some abbreviations on our MAR that will translate um, and we'll get there in just a moment as well. Um, but this is a liquid and it's to be administered G-tube, so not orally. For what reason? Feeding disorder. Is it an emergency medication? No. And I don't have any special instructions. So um, I know being a nurse, I know how to use a G-tube, so I, I don't really need any special instructions, but a family may have special instructions in the way they like to do things, um, and that's always super helpful too. So Miralax, seven gram powder. So I know that this is the form that I'm going to receive it receive it um, and the dose is one capful in the morning so 17 grams in the morning and then a half capful eight and a half grams at bedtime um, oral for chronic constipation and water or juice is cool to dissolve the Miralax in um, so a little bit of water or juice uh, Flonase is another common one. So, so a lot of people would sometimes just put Flonase and not give me anything else. Like I said, I can assume that generally speaking, Flonase is a 15 microgram nasal spray. So each squirt of the nasal pump or the, or the, of the Flonase is going to distribute a squirt. And so each squirt is typically 15 milligrams, but I need to have the appropriate information and exactly what it is um, because there can be different com concentrations of Flonase. Um, so Flonase, 50 microgram nasal spray, um, two squirts per nostril. Um, some people are one squirt per nostril, and but in the morning, nasally. So sniff, squirt and sniff, uh, and then 
what's the reason? Typically seasonal allergies, uh, but it could be some other reason. Um, is this an emergency medication? Oh, whoops, I missed the spot. <laughs> emergency medication, no, it is not. So just one line through uh, an initial. If you do make, a, make uh, an error on here. Um, and then sometimes some of our campers need to be reminded to take a sniff between each squirt, uh, which is really helpful with flour. Otherwise, they'll just roll back out of the nose and then it's not effective. Um, and so then the standing order medications. This is a box that gets overlooked a lot or some funky stuff happens down here. <laughs> so our standing orders medication, this means the following non-prescription. So these are over-the-counter medications. Um, the non-prescription medications are supplied by the health center as an, on an as-needed basis. So these are all the medications that I have in stock at the health center um, or in the health center area uh, for each session. And so please check all that your participant may take. Um, some campers cannot take Tylenol. Some campers can't take ibuprofen. Um, so there some... It's, you know, you might not want us to be able to give all of these medications while they're with us. So select the ones that are appropriate um, that you would like to give us permission to administer. Anything that we have stocked in our health center, um, you do not need to bring your own stock. However, if you have additional as needed medications that are not listed on here, it does need to be listed on the form as an as needed medication. Um, Please don't write in medications down here that are to be given as needed um, because they're not going to be stocked. So these are just the stocked medications for the health center. Um, and so PRNs, I think I have many PRNs on the next page of this so that we'll go over that. But of course, physician signature, the printed name, so I actually know who the physician is, um, the date that they're signing off on this and their phone number in the event I need to contact them for anything. Um, so the second page should be all PRNs. Yes, these are all PRNs that I could come across. So page two of two, still have the physician signature, printed name, and this doesn't need to be selected again as long as it's been selected um, on the first page. So, and you can even put a little note that says see page one if you have multiple pages that you're submitting. Um, so yes, this participant takes medications that are listed below um, and any over-the-counter PRN medications. So these are the PRNs. So an EpiPen um, or an epinephrine injection, 0.3 milligram injection. Like I said, I know that this is for an emergency administration. We don't give epinephrine um, just for funsies. Uh, it's typically in response to an anaphylactic allergy response, but I still need all the information. Uh, so EpiPen, 0.3 milligram injection. One injection, which is 0.3 milligrams, um, given PRN as needed, um, either sub-Q or intramuscular. IM injection, so sub subcutaneous or intramuscular injection as a response to anaphylaxis, and they are allergic to sesame and tree nuts. And yes, this is an emergency medication. Um, another type of emergency medication that you'll see, uh, albuterol or inhalers. So an albuterol is an, an uh, inhaled medication for uh, asthma attacks, albuterol sulfate, um, 90 micrograms per inhalation, so per puff. Uh, and the directions are one to two puffs, so that's 90 to 180 micrograms as needed, um, inhaled for shortness of breath and wheeze. It is an emergency medication. And see just one line through, asthma attacks triggered by a cold and exercise, which is common. Um, so another thing to be to remember and be mindful of is any emergency medication that is listed on the mar or listed on the medication orders must be brought to camp with them if it is listed on their medication list those medications must be brought to whatever camp session uh, your participant and camper is signed up for they will not be admitted to camp if they do not have that emergency medication um, that is too much of a liability for any of our staff to take on um, because I have orders for it saying that this is what 
can possibly be expected um, if something were to happen. Um, so I know that. I don't have spares. Um, I mean, we keep an EpiPen on, on stop, but I don't have inhalers. I don't have diastat for seizures. Um, so these things, if that, I can't willingly take a participant that has a condition that they need and require an emergency medication for, and then they don't have that emergency medication with them. Um, so, so yeah. So then another common type of as needed medication is melatonin, a five milligram tablet. They can take one to two tablets of five to 10 milligrams at bedtime as needed, orally, sleep aid, not an emergency medication, and a little tidbit information may have trouble falling asleep if they weren't active enough that day. Um, and another common uh, one that I see um, that gets a little less strict is ointments, creams, um, lotions, that kind of thing. Um, so CeraVe, healing lotion, ointment, that can be prescribed, but it can also be gotten or found over the counter. Um, so if there is an ointment or prescribed ointment or, or, and there's medication in it, um, I do need to know the uh, milligrams or micrograms um, per, you know, for the cream, that kind of thing, for the percentage. Um, but then generally the dosage is going to be uh, one application. Some lotions and creams, you know, say, you know, a half inch to one inch application, those kinds of things I would definitely need to know. Um, but generally speaking, if it's just a topical, you know, doesn't have any milligrams or percentage strength associated with it, just a simple application, you can describe the size amount, um, that kind of thing, but as needed topical, um, for any redness, itching, dry, scaly skin, um, apply sparingly to affected areas and avoid the face. So this is a really great um, entry that I know exactly what I'm doing with this ointment. Um, so yeah, so that is page two of a correct form. Now I'm going to offer you a form uh, where we have a camper who does not take routine medications and has not been given approval for any uh, standing orders, which is okay. It just means I wouldn't be able to administer any medications to him, to this camper. Um, so if that is you and that is the case, I will still need one of these forms on file for your camper, um, but it'll be one out of one pages. Camper name, date of birth, disability, allergies, if applicable, you know. Um, and then this top box here, this protest participant takes no medications on a routine basis. So if that bar box is checked, I know not to look for any information here. Now, standing order medications, again, this is optional. You don't have to select any of these. Just know that if you don't select it, in the event that they should need it, they will not receive anything. And you may receive a call from us, um, depending on what it is that your camper may need to be picked up. They, they need to go somewhere else or be somewhere else to, to receive care. Um, but generally that's not typically an issue, just saying that that could arise. Um, so yeah, if none are indicated, no as needed camp supplied medications will be provided to your camper. Um, but I still need the physician signature, still need a printed name, the date, this form will still expire within a, within a year of this date. And then the phone number, again, if I have any questions or the health center staff has any questions and they can contact your provider from there. Second most important page of our medication form is this last page, because this gives parent legal guardian authorization for me to administer those meds. Again, the physician signature is to confirm that the information there is correct and that I legally have an, uh, an ability to administer from a medical standpoint, but this is gives permission to treat um, from the parent or guardian. Um, please review this form carefully as well, the back form. This has a lot of information here um, that I'm probably reiterating in this video and also is going to be reiterated in the um, instructions document and guidelines to follow for any health center paperwork for the future. Um, so yeah, please review this form um, and the instructions here on our medic, the backside of our medication form um, 
so the pink form. Uh, but very important, if I don't have the signature or the physician's signature, it does not, it's not a go. Um, and I legally don't have a right to do, to do or provide any care. So this is our, this is a sample medication administration record. Um, and I pulled it from our list, our correct list. So let me go ahead and grab that now. I think both of our correct lists. So we'll compare them here. Sorry, juggling all my stuff. So this is the, the administration record that I use to administer meds. So here will be the dates of the sessions. And then in this column next to, okay, so, so right here, it's 8.30 dose. I will, myself or another health center staff, will initial here that that medication was given at breakfast time at this in this time frame. Um, so this is the form also that when you come to check in at camp, we are checking off the list what you brought. So say, so this is um, your camper. So first, first name, nickname, and last. So I always wanna know what your camper prefers to be called or what you call them at home. Um, this will be the name of the session what group or cabin they may be in. Um, campers, last first name and date of birth down here. And then down here is going to reflect the order date um, that I'm referencing for this information. So the format will be, this is the Medicaid, the available medication, the medication that is being brought to camp. I know how many milligrams um, and the form. So this could be powder, this could be a tablet, capsule, um, liquid, injection, suppository. So that's what I mean by form. And the milligrams tell me how much strength or medication is in each one. So 30 milligrams per capsule. Um, and it happens to be a one capsule 30 milligram dose of this Focalin. So that's how it, let's see. This one. So that's how I relay that information onto our administration record. So Focalin XR 30 milligram capsule. That's what I'm relaying over here. Focalin XR 30 milligram capsule. It is a one capsule 30 milligram dose every morning. That's what Q means. Q means every AM. Um, so that is breakfast time for us. And I translate that to 830. Uh, breakfast is at 8.45, and so anything that needs to be given in the morning or on wake up, they can be given um, at 7.30, so up to more than an hour before breakfast um, for those medications that need to be administered before breakfast and in, a, in a, enough time before breakfast, um, so 8.30, and we are able to administer medications an hour up to an hour before or an hour after. Um, so that is our breakfast administration. And again, so I relay over here, ADHD. This is the indication. So I have it right here so that I know and all the other staff knows that this is exactly what this medication is for. Um, and then any information here. So as we're going through the session, I'm I'm pouring or other health staff or pouring meds. And now we know, oh, I need to go grab some applesauce for this administration or just a little bit with, with a spoon because I'm going to need to be able to give it like this. So that really helps us on, on that end of it. Um, so the erythromycin solution. So 20, 200 milligram, five milliliter solution. I'm going to be giving five milliliter, milliliters, a 200 milligram dose every a.m., so at breakfast at two o'clock, use a 24-hour time clock. Um, that is the safest practice uh, in the medical field, so that's what we go by, because um, this could, if this said two, is that two in the morning or two in the afternoon? Um, so 1400, two in the afternoon, and p.m. P.m. for us equates to dinner time, so that is six o'clock. And then via G-tube, so per V feeding disorder and there was no additional 
information or special instructions. So that was left blank. Um, melatonin. So that is a PRN. I had did have that on there. So melatonin. I know that I am receiving a five milligram tablet because that's what the document says that I, that's been given to me. And I know I can give one to two tablets, so five to ten milligrams, five to ten milligrams every night at bedtime as needed. So that's what PRN means. HS is bedtime, PRN as needed, and PO is oral route. So PO stands for per oral. Um, it is a sleep aid. And then the, my little special instructions that were given to me. Um, so again, there is the Miralax. So this is what comes out of the information on here. And this is why the information needs to be correct and as precise as possible. Um, because I need to know exactly what I need to know when it comes to our administration and also our other staff. So that we're not, again, assuming and leaving things up to our own devices. Um, cause we are human and that is not a great idea. Um, so that's why we have procedures, um, and repetition to reduce human error as much as possible. Um, so this is, so that's one, if you have medications, what one could look like and before, um, so 72 hours before each session, I need to, I need these to be verified so that our check-in process, um, when it comes to the day that you are checking in with your camper, um, it should be a much smoother check-in process because we've already gone over everything and I should just be checking that this is here, this is, yep, yep, this is Focalin, it is 30 milligrams, it is capsule, we are giving it in the morning, check, 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 okay, on to next. Um, and then we go through, you agree, I agree, you get your signature, you get my signature, and then we have a great session at camp. <laughs> and then at the end of session, um, you'll come back to me, check out. All these medications will be given back to you and signed off again there. So that's if you have medications. If you don't have medications, um, you still need to come in and check in with me and verify that, okay, yeah, we still don't have any routine meds and you don't have any standing orders as poor, um, oh, where did that one go? Here we go, this one. So this MAR is reflective of this medication form. So not taking any routine medications, doesn't have anything listed, not taking any standing order medications, but I do have authorization that, okay, yeah, we're good, we're, we're there. He doesn't take any medications. So that's what that signature provides to me, that we're good not to receive any medications at camp. Um, and that's what that will look like. And I, you will still sign, I will still sign saying, yep, we're all good to go and we're all on the same page. Um, I believe that covers just about everything, but I will, let's reference this sheet again. So going back over the abbreviations um, and what everything means. So breakfast, our administration times are breakfast, lunch, dinner, bedtime, and then we have those few weird wonky medications that are administered during weird and off times. So we have our off times as indicated, which tend to be like two o'clock, five o'clock, maybe 10.30 in the morning. But again, we, so that MAR is going to list some of these abbreviations that you might not be uh, familiar or comfortable with. But again, we are on a 24 hour time clock. So you'll see here, 8.30, 8.30. So this is just 8.30 in the morning. This is 8.30 at night, 20.30. So 24 hour clock, or breakfast is at 8.30. So this is the AM. So whenever you list AM on our medication form, I'm gonna default to 8.30. 8.30 a.m. This is the, early, the earliest medications will be administered for the day is at 7.30 and breakfast is served at 8.45. Um, generally, uh, we do all of our prepping and keep all of our medical um, and medications in the dining room locked in a, or in the health center, depending uh, on the session. So that is where medications are administered, unless something is um, really out there and can't be done. Um, but generally, that is the safest place for us to be able to administer medications and do what we need to do. 
um, is either at the health center or in the dining hall. So at lunch, uh, noon can be documented on the medical form, 12 o'clock, 12 p.m., so that's lunch. Uh, dinner is p.m., 1800, 6 p.m. Bedtime, or HS, is 20.30 or 8.30 p.m. And like I said, common off-time medication or administrations would be 2 p.m., which is 1400, 5 p.m., 1700, or 10.30 in the morning, which would be 10.30. Um, as needed is PRN. Um, and then these are other abbreviations that you will find on our MAR, such as PO by mouth, which is per oral if you're going to do the literal translation. INH, inhaled, NEB, nebulizer, INJ, injection, SQ, subcutaneous, and IM, intramuscular. Now there's many, many more abbreviations out there in terms of medical terminology, et cetera. These are just the ones that are most common to our paperwork. All right, so that covers just about everything. And I wanna take the time now to just reiterate some of the important reminders, especially as they relate to some of our new processes. So the first thing is just making sure that the, your paperwork is submitted at least two weeks prior to the start of our session. This is per policy. And I'd also like that if there are any corrections that need to be made, that they are provided no later than 72 hours before the start of our session. Um, as I'm the only one that processes this, this paperwork and I can process up to 600 camper files per annually, um, this is really helpful in making sure I have enough time to prepare um, adequately for each session. Along with corrections being verified no later than 72 hours, I will also ask that our medication administration record for your camper, so your MAR, will be verified no later than 72 hours. Um, I will send those out via email for you to review and then confirm via email um, or written communication that it is correct. And this will provide us a much more fluid and safe experience for you, our campers and staff um, at check-in. We really want to avoid having to make any corrections at check-in or even having to turn your camper away and not allowing them to be admitted to camp because we don't have everything we need. So all these new processes are to prevent any hiccups um, at check-in and so that we all have a really great time at camp. All forms, sample forms um, that were in this video along with the instruction document will be provided to you as a PDF so that you may print them out and follow along to this video as you are completing your forms. Knowing that it is the sole responsibility of you, the providers, and any other legal guardians that these forms are absolutely correct when they get to me and are submitted. Also, any updates or changes to medical history and most especially medications, uh, you must provide a new and complete medication form. And so changes and updates may be dosage changes. So it was one uh, dose of milligrams and then that changed either up higher or lower. Maybe there was a time change. So in the morning to the afternoon or evening to morning, one or the other, and also when, uh, when a medication is discontinued, we need documentation of that as well, and a new form with all current medications on it, um, and specifically saying that a medication has been discontinued. Um, and of course, signature verified by the provider that these changes uh, have occurred. That gives me authorization and a legal ability to administer the changes. I also very highly recommend that you keep copies uh, of your medical forms for yourself so that you can keep track of expirations, but you can always reach out to me and I can confirm um, anything that we have on file. So one of the next and probably most important changes that we've made is that we are no longer accepting printed medication lists from facilities, provider offices, or handwritten or typed lists from home that are provided as C attached on our medication form. These will absolutely under no circumstance be accepted anymore. All medications must, must, must be listed individually and completely on our medication form or the pink form. Um, 
getting the lists uh, from so many different types of facilities with different types of formats. Um, a lot of the times, not all the information that we need for camp is on those forms and oftentimes causes much confusion, um, especially whenever there's a lot of medications. So I know that this is an inconvenience and I know that it is a tedious task, um, but if it's done and done correctly, then we don't have to revisit it time and time again. Um, and we have everything we need for camp and nobody is at risk of being turned away uh, because we're either missing a medication or one, I don't have enough information to be able to provide a safe administration. So that is one of the biggest uh, and key changes that we have made. So no more C attached or printed lists. Another reminder to be made is that any as needed behavior modifying medications are not and will not be permitted while at camp. This includes mood stabilizers or controlled substances that alter your camper's mood or are used to control a certain type of behavior. Um, in some some instances this can be considered a chemical restraint um, so under as needed circumstances we cannot administer those medications at camp but we can administer them routinely if we have an order to do so so say they receive it in the morning and the evening um, but we cannot give them a medication in the event they become aggressive or perhaps have a panic crisis um, so if you have a camp if your camper uh, has any type of orders like this for at home, please reach out, talk to me so that we can find a solution uh, so that you, your camper can have a fun time at camp and you can have the peace of mind that they're going to be well taken care of. Last but not least, if your camper is coming to camp with any prescribed controlled substances, so things like lorazepam, Xanax, or any pain medications that are narcotics, please note that we will need to complete a count at check-in and check-out. Uh, to make this process go a little bit more quickly, please consider only sending to camp exactly what they will need to get them through their session, and maybe one to two extra pills or tablets um, in the event one or two are wasted because they fall on the floor or they are spit up um, or anything of that sort. All right, friends, that's a wrap. Thank you so much for hanging with me through this video. I know it was tedious. I know there's a lot of information here. So if there's any questions that you may have, um, things that I may not have covered, especially for your specific situation, please don't hesitate to reach out. I'd love to work with you to find a solution or help you guide you through um, anything else that you may need. Again, I hope this video was really helpful and explained step by step. Um, and again, always reach out if you have any questions. Thank you so very much and look forward to seeing you and your camper soon.